the China Hill uh, workshop. Today, we are very proud and glad to have Mr. Thorsten Rahud, our speaker, the director of German Business Facility, to talk on the dual system professional training in Hong Kong and introduce to us the German dual system education, which is very renowned in the world. And today we are also very happy and proud to have Dr. Law as our host uh, for, for this talk. Now, uh, our web seminar begins. So I hand it over to Dr. Law and also to Mr. Thorsten Rahul. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm very glad to be able to host this morning meeting because that is a very important issue. I, I, I know that, you know, several months ago, we have a meeting with uh, uh, senior officers from the VTC, we kind of talk about technical education in Hong Kong. Because that's an issue that have been, you know, talking about in many years, because everybody knows that in Hong Kong, like many of the, you know, East Asian countries, uh, parents are very eager for students to have good examination results and try to have a single path of going to universities and so on. But the world, you know, has been changing so fast that we, we found that, you know, in Hong Kong, because it's more and more a sort of uh, multicultural and, you know, multidisciplinary sort of society. We need technical people in all works of life. And then we found that we have to educate our younger generation to be able to fill in all sorts of, you know, working in workforces, people. So I, I think that um, Germ Germany is a, a place that we can learn a lot from that. You know, my I personally have been to Germany to, you know, as an evaluator of the project of the sandwich course in high school. Mm. Yes. A, a number of, of our Hong Kong kids went there, you know, half time, studying in high school and half time as a apprentice in the um in the local industry and we found it is fascinating fascinating experience the kids learn you know how to work and how to communicate and how to integrate themselves with society i think that is the sort of experience when we were in the in hong kong talking about education we formed and our next generation need to the not only the book works and exam answering do good exam result, but we are able to swap the wife in the twenty first century. So I'm very glad to have Mr. Ruhat to be able to share his um, experience and also to talk about the, the German dual system. I think um, we will have Mr. Ruhat to have um, uh, deliver a speech first, and then later on we will have more discussions and Q and A and so on to e explore more on this issue. Yes, thanks, Mr. Johnston. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for having me uh, today, Mr. Dr. Law. Um, I'm very happy to uh, deliver, yeah, a more insight of uh, the professional uh, dual uh, uh, professional training system um, in general. And uh, yeah, especially here in Hong Kong, what we are offering here in uh, in Hong Kong, and um, yeah, I will give you a short uh, introduction of myself um, to get a better understanding um, where I come from. So we have to. Okay, so I'm the uh, director of uh, the German Business Faculty here in Hong Kong since. 2017 and i'm actually an uh, yeah example of the versatility of the vocational education system why because i grew up in this system um, i will explain you later the yeah two paths uh, you can follow in in germany one is the um, the usual education the standard education path and uh, on the other hand, you you can join um, the professional uh, path, and um, I will 
show you later exactly uh, my way and then you will recognize that uh, I'm actually a child of this uh, vocational training system. Um, I, I did two trainings in, uh, in the past. I, I joined when I finished my, my school uh, after yeah, nine or ten years of school. Um, it's, it's the middle school. Um, um, I, I made an apprenticeship in, in Germany and I worked uh, in a bank for three years. So I, I joined in my, my early days um, um, one of those uh, apprenticeship programs in Germany. And I also did the training program uh, as a paramedic. Uh, why? Because I was not sure. Um, yeah, what's the right path for me? I was, I was, yeah. Let's say it uh, in these words. I was uh, sick of learning in, in young age, and and I really uh, was looking for something different. And and I, I had to to organize myself and find uh, the right path for for me. And so yeah, these two programs gave me um, the possibility to uh, yeah experience uh, another environment and uh, yeah to to get an idea of uh, what I really want to do after that I studied um, business administration and uh, economics and then I was uh, working several uh, years um, uh, in the in the consultancy uh, or in the consulting uh, business uh, for insolvency consulting and um, yeah I, I worked there and, and it was okay for me but it, it's it was not the, really my passion to be to be honest and um, I, I uh, got the, the possibility uh, from my from my boss to to work for a university to uh, uh, hold lectures at, at the university and then I, I felt like wow this is something I really want to go into and um, I really want to focus on uh, on this path and that's what I did I uh, studied again at the university. I, I, I did a master degree in finance in banking and um, complete the, the first and second state exam um, in the context of uh, teacher training in Germany. And then before I, I came to Hong Kong, I worked for around 10 years in a big vocational school in Germany with more than 3000 students and, and 150 um, uh, teachers. And yeah, Again, um, I decided to get out of my comfort zone and, and discover <laughs> something else. And we moved uh, to, to Hong Kong with my, with my family. I have uh, three kids um, um, in, in an age, uh, which is uh, yeah, now the best for, for joining our program. So my, my oldest son also did this program. And yeah. That's, I think, enough um, to to my person. But um, what I want to uh, show you and share with you is the the education system in Germany. What I what I uh, uh, talked to you already. If you can see here on the on the right side, this is the traditional education. So we have three types after a primary school. Usually, you join the so-called Hauptschule. Realschule or uh, Gymnasium. These are the three types of schools which you can enter after uh, the primary school. So, um, uh, this leads you to uh, 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 a certain level of, uh, of uh, education for Hauptschule and Realschule. And if you uh, uh, do the Gymnasium, you uh, have the possibility to study at university, mm -hmm. so you have a higher diploma degree. Um, the Hauptschule, it's, we call it general secondary school. It's the lowest education level in Germany. Um, if you pass it, um, you have your degree. You can always top up this degree. And this is the USP, I think, of the German education system. You can, let's let's put it that way. If, if you graduate, you can always top it up with mm. a higher degree. That's really unique uh, in the whole world in the in the education system. And besides this um, education system here, the three uh, types I, I explained to you, we have the vocational 
system here. And it's equivalent mm -hmm. to the normal mm -hmm. education in, in Germany. So, for example, if you fail this path here in the lowest level, you have the possibility in the um, um, vocational training to join our courses, to graduate and to go up to all these different levels of education. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are the, the our education system um, has always a connection to a higher level. And this is really interesting. Why? Because I mean, if you have kids, you know, some are uh, really good performer, high performer, some are probably performing in their uh, middle age, mm -hmm. yeah, if they are older, if they realize, okay, I really uh, want to do something more and I, I'm, I'm really passionate about uh, a topic. So in our system, you can always do a better degree if you like. And in most of the education systems, if you choose one path, you have, it, it's only one way. You are not allowed to mm -hmm. go back, step back mm -hmm. and go another way. Okay, so this is very unique in uh, in our education system. And if we look at the, at the chart here, uh, I can explain you my, uh, my way after I, I uh, graduate here, primary school, uh, I followed this path, uh, the Mittlere uh, Reife Realschule, so it's secondary school, standard education level mm -hmm. in Germany. I graduated and then I moved to the uh, to the vocational training and I do uh, I did this uh, vocational training uh, as a banker mm -hmm. I work in a bank for three years and together with my degree I was able to join the so-called Berufskolleg it's a one-year uh, program to uh, uh, a one-year vocational college we call it to get a degree which allows me to go to university. Okay, so um, this is something really um, unique for for Germany and which helps us to let the people grow in their own uh, in their own way. You know, um, what we offer here is the and also in Germany, it's very common in Germany the the German dual system. Um, um, why, why they call the dual? <laughs> because we have uh, two different learning locations. Mm -hmm. This is uh, unique. At the same time, you are uh, working for a training company. So you are the, the practical part uh, you learn in the training company and the theoretical part uh, is uh, taught in the German business faculty, so in school. And this is the dual system, okay, which makes it really unique as well. We, from my uh, uh, recognition, I, I know we have it in, in Austria. It's a, it's a similar program in Austria and in, uh, in Denmark. But usually, yeah, different uh, countries have, have different programs, but this is a very unique program that you do the same, uh, I did different things in the same time. So they join school for one and a half days during the week and uh, go to the work in the in the uh, training company for three and a half days. I will uh, tell you more about the, the school part later on. Let me uh, focus on the on the training companies. Um, uh, as I said, one and a half days in school, three and a half days the students join um, uh, in the in the training company. In Germany, it's uh, it's different. They organize it, organize it sometimes uh, in, in like in block uh, teaching and block uh, working phases. So, for example, students stay for four or six weeks in the training companies and then they uh, they go back to school for another four or six or six weeks. Um, yeah, it's a it's a concept um, uh, which connect both the theoretical and practical part, uh, as, I, as I said, and uh, for the training companies, it is very uh, important that they follow also a, a, a syllabus. Mm -hmm. They have to organize the training, so it's an individual plan mm -hmm. for the trainee, so they can rotate in between the different departments mm -hmm. 
in the in the training uh, company. So, for example, purchasing, production, sales, marketing, uh, HR. So they see in the first year usually they rotate in uh, different departments and get an idea, get an overview of the uh, whole company. And then in the second uh, training year, they can decide, okay, I will focus focus on that matter. I will focus in, in this area. I'm, I'm more in marketing and I will stay in this department for a, a longer time. But they should have an overview how how is a, a company function the function of a, of a company no? so um, yeah I, I brought some some figures about the dual training in in Germany I mean around 50 percent of all uh, uh, 15 year old uh, graduate from the dual system so every second child uh, graduates in this vocational uh, uh, education. Mm -hmm. More than 50% of the adults in Germany have completed vocational training. So every second German mm -hmm. uh, was uh, 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 participated in this in this vocational training. I guess I told you before, mm -hmm. this is really the, the the neck bone of the of the strength of the of the German econ economy, no? <coughs> the power of the of the German economy. Around 1.3 million um, apprentices in Germany every year um, in three, almost three areas, around 60% in industry and commerce, 30% uh, handcraft and uh, around 15% in civil service and uh, liberal uh, professions. Uh, in total, we have around yeah, more than 300 uh, registered, recognized training occupations in uh yeah different models we we offer it in in two-year programs we offer three-year programs that's the the usual uh length of of uh, training uh, three years and uh also 3.5 years so three and a half years of uh, training duration yeah what are the if, if you relate it to the to the degree, what what the students can get in Germany, what they choose usually with a general secondary school diploma, they choose yeah topics like sale, uh, retail, automotive, mechatronics, engineer, things like that. If you are a secondary school, if you are a secondary school diploma holder, usually they they uh, choose industry and commerce civil service like retail office management also automotive medical assistant things like that and if you uh, achieve the highest diploma in in germany the uh, abitur you usually uh, step into industry and commerce so industry office management it of course wholesale and foreign trade and uh, number nine transport and logistic mm -hmm. and here in hong kong i will i will let you know later we offer three uh, streams the it stream digitalization wholesale and foreign trade and uh, transport and logistic so the top three of the top 10 with the highest uh, diploma in in germany what's professional competence in our point of view it's as you can see the willingness and ability of individuals to behave in professional social and private situation in an appropriately reasoned manner and in an individually and socially responsible manner that's the definition but um, yeah the question is what kind of competences do you need to achieve this goal? We always talk about social competences, uh, expertise, of course, and human competences, communication skills, methodic methodical skills, and learning skills. All these competences and skills are combined mm -hmm. professional competence in our uh, point of view. And the question is, how can you develop 
such skills. Mm -hmm. And this is also something really unique in the vocational training mm -hmm. because, I mean, you, you can look uh, into a book, you can read something mm -hmm. about it, but I guess the most important thing is to practice it, mm -hmm. okay? So in the real world, in the real life. And this is something what we bring into our classroom. Um, I will give you some examples. Our, yeah, how trainees develop professional competencies. We always say we have seven pillars, learning by doing. Give the younger generation, the young students time to improve um, when they practice something uh, um, and, and yeah, they can learn it if they practice it real in real uh, real life. Own active action and mentally comprehend. Learning for action, learning from job typical tasks and assignments. It's a very uh, special thing, but we <coughs> try to, to achieve this. Acting in a team. This is not so simple, to be honest, especially for young, uh, uh, young students. Work together, sometimes step back a little bit, listen try to think about it, uh, what's, what could be the outcome of the whole team. Often the team uh, outcome is a better outcome than the individual outcome. Okay, you can get bet a better result if you work together in a team, but you have to train this, okay? Interaction with colleagues, also in the training companies. Integration in team and work processes. Holistic action. Holistic comprehension of the uh, typical work and business processes, enabling experience, incorporate existing and uh, enable new tasks, complete actions. We have a whole action and th th this is something what we also try in the classroom during our lessons to complete the whole action from the beginning to the end. Do not interrupt, stay behind your your goal and try to finish it this is something very very uh, important largely independent planning execution review correction even during the process mm. uh, you can you, you can uh, um, realize that you are probably on the wrong path mm. during this uh, whole process evaluation of your own activities Sustainable actions, of course, economic, legal, environmental, and social aspects to be considered and um, include them. So these are the pillars we are focusing in during the whole program, not only in the during the lesson uh, in school, also in the training company. And it's uh, <laughs> needless to say, also the companies have to uh, fulfill some criteria to be part of this program because this is something also the trainers in the training companies uh, have to have to learn to recognize and to to uh, give it to the to the students if we uh, look to the German dual system internationally um, we will find yeah, nine different countries who offer the same program um, beside Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is the only uh, location in, in whole Asia. And uh, it's very common in, in uh, yeah, Middle and, and South uh, America, in, in Guatemala City, for example, in Lima, Peru, uh, uh, La Paz, uh, uh, Bolivia, Brazil, Sao Paulo, and um, Argentina and also in Santiago de Chile. They offer similar programs, um, but all uh, recognized from the German authorities. And also in Europe, we have uh, two locations in Spain, in Barcelona and in Madrid, and in uh, Hungary, um, in Gyur. There is a big school, um, Audi, you probably know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the um, automobile uh, Audi, uh, the brand and uh, they offer the same the same program.
yeah, for mechatronics, for mm-hmm. example, no? they need really good workers in their in their factory, so they offer this um, this program as well. Okay, I will show you uh, a short video um, how this uh, German dual system uh, is working, and uh, yeah, it's a, sh- a short sequence, um, but it, it shows uh, very very nice and, and very easy to understand um, the, the goals and, and how the, the system is uh, uh, really working. I hope you can hear it. Oh, it's okay. This is Mila, and these are her friends. This summer they'll be done with school. Then they'll each embark on different paths into the world of work. Recently, they all took part in career counseling. Neela decided she'd like to become a technical product designer. So, like many of her friends, she'll start a dual education course. But what exactly can she expect? As the name suggests, it's a two-tier training program. One part takes place in a vocational school, and the other part is an apprenticeship at a company. The theory that Nina learns in school can be directly applied in practice at the company. The dual education and training system is very flexible. For instance, reduced training times and part-time training are also possible. This means individualized arrangements can be found for anyone. And the great thing is you get certified training and at the same time, you're already earning money. But a word of caution, not all companies offer occupational training. First, they have to fulfill certain criteria. Whether a business operation is qualified to train young people is carefully checked by the IHK, which is the German abbreviation for Industrie und Handelskammer, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. It's particularly important that Nilo, besides academic knowledge, also gains other skills at the company. Everything she's supposed to learn is listed in the education regulation for technical product designers. Above all, she must be able to put her acquired knowledge to practical use, because as a full-fledged employee, Neela will later have to manage her own projects within the company. During training, the IHK provides ongoing assistance to Neela and her training company. Initially, it takes care of the registration of her contract and later on sees to the organization and administration of tests. Should any disputes arise, the Chamber of Commerce mediates between the trainee and her company. The IHK is a point of contact for any questions before, during and after training. Following her dual system training, Nina has a variety of prospects. She could advance within the company or pursue further education to gain a higher certificate. After a few years of professional experience, she can also study at university, even without a higher school leaving certificate. Her prospects are versatile, and she's also attractive for other companies. With dual training and education, Nina is ideally equipped for the labor market and for her own career. So I hope you can get an uh, yeah general overview about uh, this uh, program and how the the program uh, is or the function of, of this program and uh, yeah who is uh, taking the lead in the theoretical and the practical part and how are the things organized. Um, I will now go a little bit deeper um, uh, yeah to the vocational training in uh, Hong Kong. So what we offer here in Hong Kong. You probably know uh, Kaplan as a service uh, provider, a big service provider, a global service provider um, in more than than 30 countries and over 400 locations around the world. And Kaplan is uh, usually um, offering bachelor and master degrees um, from many uh, international universities. 
uh, especially in the UK and the US and also uh, uh, Australia. And um, yeah, they have more than 20,000 students and we are part of the Kaplan uh, community. We are located in the, uh, at the Kaplan campus on the uh, second floor over there with our program with the German business uh, faculty and we are a small team um, uh, so six people are working for the German uh, uh, business faculty um, most of them are teachers of course uh, my colleague Daniel uh, Backenhaus he is the head of transport and logistic management uh, and I'm responsible for for uh, wholesale and foreign trade and digitalization um, we have also uh, business English taught by Jamie, he's an Australian guy, and um, also Mandarin, we teach Mandarin, uh, two lessons per, per week, um, uh, taught by, by Annika, and also IT and digitalization teacher, uh, David Pfau from, uh, from Germany. So in total, the students have uh, 16 lessons per week. Mm -hmm. um, most of the lessons are focused on the main topic, wholesale, transport and logistic or digitalization. But as I said, one uh, hour uh, business English, two hours or uh, two lessons, Mandarin and Chinese studies. Uh, that means how to behave, for example, if you have uh, uh, meetings with uh, Chinese, Chinese companies, you know, you, yeah, it's, it's a cultural, cultural, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how to how to negotiate you know uh, uh, yeah you have to you have to be aware you know different cultures have different rules so yeah this is uh, something also very very important uh, that the young uh, students have to learn and uh, yeah 16 hours per, per week um, the German business faculty yeah is a part of Kaplan Kaplan business and accountancy school and um, we work really close together with the in the video they they called it IHK, but uh, uh, in foreign countries we call it AHK, uh, German Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. So they are supervising the whole program. They are organizing the program, and uh, they are responsible also. They are the, the first contact for the training companies. Mm -hmm. So if there are any issues between the training companies and um, the students and the, the, the school, uh, German industry and commerce uh, will uh, help to resolve these uh, uh, problems. And yeah, the, the students have uh, yeah, two functions in the training companies. They are employees, mm -hmm. okay? Apprentices, employees, and in school, uh, they are students, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a double function mm -hmm. for them. Um, and we are under the supervision of the central office uh, for schools abroad, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs in, in Germany. No? Um, so my position is uh, directly uh, connected to, to this uh, authority and uh, yeah, all the others um, as well. And we have to report to these authorities, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at the development uh, mm -hmm. of this course, we are we were established mm -hmm. almost 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, yeah, in, in 1984, um, some parents of the German Swiss International School, mm -hmm. uh, Swiss and German parents, mm -hmm. thought, okay, when our kids are uh, graduated mm -hmm. in school, so they finished secondary mm -hmm. secondary education. How can we keep them here in Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. Of course, they want to study, but mm -hmm. sometimes they really didn't know uh, mm -hmm. what 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 mm -hmm. to study and and what to do afterwards. And it, it's still the same nowadays. Uh, if you if you ask the, the younger generation, what are you doing after you graduated? most of the time they, they really don't know mm -hmm. because the possibilities are so huge. They have so many different mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, perspectives, uh, what they can do, what they can study, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of them want to do a gap year, 
mm-hmm. step back a little bit, <laughs> relax. Mm-hmm. Some of them have a, 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 a clear idea, but it's a minority. They don't. Most of the students don't have a clear idea. Uh, idea what they really want to do they after want to explore the idea <laughs> explore yeah of course explore the idea and and what, what we can do is yeah exactly what, what we can do is give them time mm-hmm. to explore their mm-hmm. own ideas mm-hmm. i guess the the occupation we are focusing in, in our mm-hmm. uh, uh, when we were young mm-hmm. it's totally different mm-hmm. what they will achieve in what you said before mm-hmm. in, in 10 15 20 years mm-hmm. it's it's a totally different uh, mm-hmm. economic system mm-hmm. business system so we don't know today mm-hmm. what kind of occupations uh, uh, companies will offer in 20 years so or even five years, or even five years yeah? mm-hmm. so Time is changing, and and uh, the environment is changing, and this is really something. Yeah, mm-hmm. we should give our younger generation, from my point of view, a little bit more time mm-hmm. to yeah focus on the right path. Yeah? So, yeah, that's what uh, my expectation is on the on the vocational training. Um, we started with uh, office uh, admi- administration in the beginning and then in the 19th uh, they they recognize okay wholesale foreign trade is the the major topic here mm-hmm. for especially for for german companies uh, but just just to say it, it's our program is not only open for german companies mm-hmm. uh, i will show you later our companies um with uh, we are working uh, so it's international, really international companies and also uh, Hong Kong based companies. So they they um, established wholesale and foreign trade in the 19th and uh, 2004. They they opened transport and logistic management and we celebrated uh, 2020, our 35th uh, anniversary. And then we uh, did the next yeah move and a big move. We we. Uh, um, went to, to, to Kaplan. Now we are located in the middle of uh, Wan Chai, Hennessy mm-hmm. Road. Mm-hmm. It's a good location, good classrooms, nice environment, um, really short distances for our students because usually they live around this area, Wan Chai, Causeway Bay. So they have uh, yeah short ways to their uh, training companies and also to school. It's a nice environment over there. And uh, this year, no, last last year, 20, 2020, um, uh, this school year, we uh, established a digitalization management, a third stream. And um, yeah, currently we are we are having uh, three training programs with around forty four students, in total in uh, five classes. That's what we do. We have more than six hundred graduates already successful graduates uh, in more than 35 years of uh, experience. Um, people are always asking me, uh, who can join your program? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your student body? We are very international, to be honest. Um, one criteria, of course, is the German language, mm-hmm. but uh, we are very international. Uh, we have uh, graduates from German schools or other schools in Asia, um, most of the students are from Germany or have a yeah a background German background. They are uh, native speaker. Well, their families from Germany. Some of them uh, lived abroad, uh, graduated abroad, and on different uh, schools, U.S., Latin America. So we are international. So everyone is uh, really welcome to join our program who is uh, yeah aware of the of the german german language who can speak german because there's a reason behind this um, i told you our program is recognized uh, from the german authorities so um, our exams are all in in german language you need at least level c c1 mm-hmm. yeah it's a good uh, level language level um, if you want to join our our program, but it's international. Um, dual training in Hong Kong. Our duration is uh, 22 months mm-hmm. in Germany. 
as I told you before, we have a different duration, three year programs, 3.5 year mm. um, uh, programs. And our program is based on a three year duration usually, but we shorten it uh, to 22 months here in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, one and a half days they spend in school, as I said, three and a half in the training company, place of learning, uh, Kaplan Business and Accountancy School for the theoretical part and uh, the practical part is mm -hmm. trained uh, in, in the training company. Language of instruction, of course, German, and mm -hmm. but the business world mm -hmm. here is talking in English. Business language is English. Um, the students, they, um, they have a contract. Mm -hmm. They sign a contract with mm -hmm. the training companies and the training companies uh, uh, give them 16 days of mm -hmm. uh, holiday mm -hmm. uh, so they can can have uh, holidays uh, of course during their practical mm -hmm. period not in, in, in school we start every year first of september um, as we are a private school we have uh, tuition fees so it's around four thousand six hundred uh, Hong Kong dollar per month. Mm -hmm. So one year costs you uh, six, uh, 46 thousand Hong Kong dollars. But in the same time, the um, uh, training company is paying you mm -hmm. uh, uh, 8,000 uh, Hong Kong dollar in the first year and 9,000 Hong Kong dollar in the, in the second year. Our training companies, you probably know uh, some of those companies, for example, Lidl, um, Kaufland, Schwarz uh, Group, Lufthansa, mm -hmm. B BASF, you, oh. you, you probably know, mm -hmm. OB also, mm -hmm. Chibo, uh, German companies. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have, for example, uh, TTI, Tectonic Industries, it's mm -hmm. a Hong Kong uh, lo uh, local uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, company. Also, uh, Austrian company, Gebrüder Weiss, mm. Logistics, uh, Eurogroup, uh, a Swiss company, for example. So, also here, uh, we have the variety mm. of uh, different training uh, companies, over 30, 35 years of experience. Um, uh, yeah, we are very proud of our um, training companies. Um, and yeah, what are the requirements? Um, the minimum school qualification is the uh, 12th grade. FOS, uh, Fachoberschule, which is uh, equivalent to the German Abitur. Mm. Uh, also the FH Reife, Fachhochschulreife, uh, Matura, IB, A level. Mm. Um, mm. So everyone is welcome with uh, these qualifications. Of course, German language and good command of English. and. Uh, applicants from overseas have to be uh, at least 18 years old mm -hmm. because of the visa and, 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 visa. and yes visa. exactly exactly <clears throat> our partners so we work together of course with the with the ZFA the central office of uh, schools um, abroad we have corporations with uh, uh, different uh, universities the HBV they mm -hmm. offer uh, a dual dual studies mm -hmm. so it's a similar program mm -hmm. but it's not an apprenticeship so it's a study so you will get the, the bachelor degree afterwards mm -hmm. it's a it's a three-year program um, similar to our program and this is the idea uh, behind this uh, cooperation that we offer something uh, which the students can follow afterwards during their studies in Germany mm -hmm. so if you join our program here we allow them and that's the vocational the, the, the idea behind the vocational training to allow them to top up again okay. our uh, diploma mm -hmm. top up with a bachelor degree afterwards okay mm -hmm. uh, we also work with uh, with uh, the FOM which mm -hmm. is a, a management uh, university in uh, in Essen also very well known uh, with more than 30,000 students every year um, uh, we recently signed a, a Cooperation contract with the with FOM. We work with Progress U. I don't know if you are aware of uh, Harrison Assessment, for example. They're doing uh, workshops mm -hmm. um, to 
yeah, experience a little bit more about the possible path for the younger generation, what they can do in the future, and so on. We work together with the German Chamber of Commerce. I told you they are organizing and uh, supervising the whole the whole program. Um, we're working together with the DZ Bank, so they are visiting us um, mm. every year, uh, deliver speeches, workshops. So we try to bring the practical part also into the classroom, also also into our lessons. Mm -hmm. We are working really, really strong together with the with the um, companies outside the classroom. SAP, you probably know, mm -hmm. uh, ERP mm -hmm. systems, um, enterprise resource planning uh, system. So this, the students will, will learn the basic function of uh, such a program. Uh, we participate in, in uh, yeah, challenges like the Young Economic Summit. It's a big European challenge um, uh, yeah, for, for different schools uh, around Europe. We won the, the Best Scientific Award last year. We work, still work together with uh, German Swiss. We have some uh, yeah, nice project, projects together. And uh, let me talk a little bit more about the training in, uh, in practice. We teach with so-called uh, learning fields. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, activity-oriented teaching in the learning field concept. And this is something really um, uh, special mm -hmm. for vocational schools mm -hmm. because you will bring, as I said, the practical part uh, um, into the classroom. It's learning by doing, practice-orientated, and we, the German government, created and uh, created uh, a syllabus, especially for, for this vocational uh, training, and uh, we have special books uh, to train to train these. Um, here you can see, uh, for example, the, the syllabus, the, the uh, learning fields of wholesale and foreign trade management. As you can see here, we have uh, 13, we follow uh, 13 uh, learning fields. For example, present the company and help to shape one's uh, own role, perform procurement processes, fulfill purchase agreements, develop a marketing concept. These are all topics mm -hmm. we teach um, during, uh, during the classes. And then you can go deeper into these uh, topics. For example, if you look into uh, present a company and help to shape one's uh, one role, we have content like vocational training and employment in wholesale and foreign trade, key performance areas and positions in the economy, organization of wholesale businesses, corporate mission statements and corporate goals, uh, commercial laws, legal forms and enterprises. All these topics are taught in these uh, different uh, learning fields. And... Uh, these uh, learning fields are all connected um, to each other. They have all uh, uh, difficult levels, difficulty levels, and matched to each other. And in the end, uh, you have fulfilled all these 13 uh, yeah, learning fields to uh, be allowed to do the final examination. Uh, we have different time guidelines uh, in the in the different uh, learning fields as you can see here uh, mentioned 80 um, uh, teaching lessons per year for example mm -hmm. so that's the amount of uh, time you have to spend on uh, these uh, different uh, learning fields so in total we have 880 uh, hours mm -hmm. lessons uh, uh, for the whole program for the two-year program. As I said, we work a lot in projects. We do a lot of excursions. Every year we, we do a so-called study trip, um, sometimes to Germany. Uh, last year we went to Vietnam to get an insight of this growing economy. We visit uh, many factories over there, 
companies, international companies, uh, the German school over there. So the students get an idea, can get an idea of uh, yeah different companies and and gain more more experience over there. Young Economic Summit I already talked about it. Um, we visit in, in 2019 the Greater China Acceleration Days. Mm -hmm. We went there for for three days. Um, uh, uh, participate in in different workshops over there. We invite guest speakers all the time to bring the practical part into the classroom, as I said, here with the Commerzbank workshops, blockchain, cryptocurrency. So topics really, uh, uh, yeah, modern topics we bring into the classroom. And uh, yeah, that's what we are doing and what the, the whole program is, is based on and, and what the students, of course, really, really um, appreciate. Of course, we have final uh, examinations in the end of the of the program we have uh, written intermediate exams uh, after one year and uh, so-called early final examinations at the end of the first year for the wholesale and foreign trade students and we have uh, written final um, examinations at the end of the second year uh, in the main subjects Okay, so for the 13 mm -hmm. learning fields, we have mm -hmm. uh, a written uh, examination and for the side subjects, uh, there is no examination in the end, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the business English, Mandarin, uh, they can do HSK, for example, mm -hmm. they can get some certificates, also English certificates, but uh, yeah, it's, it's mandatory. Three certificates of achievements in the main subjects in the learning fields and um, we have a final oral exam mm -hmm. uh, in the end of the program and um, we have a committee with uh, uh, yeah um, uh, people from the from the training companies mm -hmm. trainers of the mm -hmm. training companies and and the teacher and um, supervising from the german industry and commerce and then they the students have to to uh, answer uh, some questions uh, in a oral final examination yeah, what, what can the, the students do afterwards? Mm -hmm. So, um, most of them, to be honest, uh, stay in the business community mm -hmm. um, because they mm -hmm. already gained some, some experience. Mm -hmm. Some of them will stay with their training companies mm -hmm. here in Hong Kong, do a top-up program, um, uh, which we offer from from Kaplan so after you finish our program you can do a pop, top up program uh, with Kaplan and then you can get a bachelor degree in, in one year uh, some of them are going back to Germany or somewhere else to Europe to different uh, universities some of them are staying with the company probably in Germany or somewhere else so it's totally different totally different yeah um, full time part time studies of course uh, dual studies in germany as i said uh, with our uh, cooperation partners dhbv or, or from um, they can get some additional qualifications here in hong kong they can do the hsk as i said or language certificates um, start working here in in, uh, in in hong kong with their training companies or other companies so yeah it's a it's a big a variety <laughs> afterwards mm -hmm. what, what they can do our application process this is also very interesting mm -hmm. because it's uh, it's different to the application process in germany in germany uh, usually you apply uh, to the training company mm -hmm. okay you, uh, mm -hmm. you you apply to your application form fill in the forms mm -hmm. and then you send it to, to the training company and the training company invites all the applicants to uh, uh, their interviews uh, um, and then they they decide uh, and pick their, their candidates here in Hong Kong you apply for the program mm -hmm. yeah? that means all the training companies the participating training companies will get access to a data base of all the applicants and then they can choose from 50, 60 applicants, and then they can, can do their assessments, can do their interviews, and then they can pick 
their own candidates. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh, different and very typical for for um, uh, yeah these programs uh, in, in, in foreign countries. You need a cover letter, curriculum, vitae, mm -hmm. of course, CV, references, other documents, your your um, diplomas you have to hand in. Deadline is end of March. Mm -hmm. You can apply at, uh, until the end of March, and then in April, the, uh, the training companies will get access to the to the data. Um, uh, you can apply. Uh, yeah, can you se send your application to to our school, to me, or uh, to the GIC, German Industry and Commerce, or the German Chamber of Commerce, and the German Chamber um, uh, will organize. The, the training contract mm -hmm. uh, for the training companies so they can sign it and they will take care of the next um, steps. Yeah, we have some student ambassadors mm -hmm. um, um, and this is also very, very interesting, uh, especially for new applicants so they can get a direct connection mm -hmm. To the mm -hmm. to the current uh, mm -hmm. students, and they can get in touch with them and ask uh, questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we, every year we have uh, some student ambassadors who are supporting and advertising our our program. And uh, yeah, if you have beside our Q and A right now, then uh, if you have more questions, please uh, feel free anytime to contact me, and uh, yeah, I can give you more specific uh, details on on the program yeah, i'm in time one mm. hour <laughs> it's, it's over 11 yeah. o'clock almost mm. so thank you very much for for your attention and yeah mm. feel thank you feel free to to uh, raise your questions yeah, yeah. um first of all maybe i ask a number of questions uh, in my bit this is yeah. a sort of program uh, maybe first you, you concentrate on, you know, the post uh, secondary level of yep. training, yep. like your com what your school is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's after high school graduation. Mm -hmm. Then you have this system of dual system. In Hong Kong, we have that sort of system, but it's not a dual system. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, for example, MTR, mm -hmm. they want to train the you know the, the the technicians and then they build up a school in MTR mm -hmm. to train them and then in cable wireless you know many years ago many of our students <coughs> who would not like to go to university mm -hmm. they they want to be a, a sort of trainee yeah. in a cable and wireless and cable and wireless operate a sort of training course for them mm -hmm. so it's the training course for individual companies mm -hmm who want to get, you know, mm -hmm. their employer, employee, full training and so on. But now in, in, in a system, it's not only there's very big companies mm -hmm. who are able to operate their own training school. Mm -hmm. So you coordinate with a lot of different companies to a set of centralized sort of mm -hmm. training, capable of training of all these sort of companies. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of is is a very different from, for example, the MDR school because they're concentrating the student on their own company's trade, yes. and then the the I I think of although you know many trainers the fundamental trade uh, uh, skills are all the same, but basically concentrating interested in you know developing career for this particular student in their own company. Mm -hmm. But in your system, this system, they are supposed not only training for this company, mm -hmm. so the company is a sort of, you know, a collaborator to train a student, a small student center, then a company center. Mm -hmm. So it's a different sort of system. The advantage of system, this system, I think is more geared to interest the whole society because mm -hmm. we do not are interested in, in you know the young people for a particular company mm -hmm. but young people for the whole community so this system may advantage of you know build up a system in which the younger generation 
they want to be, you know, going to the beautiful this town who practice. I think this is a very interesting system. But from educational point of view, just because we're talking about that sort of thing, you know, say t 10 or 20 years ago in, in education department, the, the thing is that in your curriculum, for example, the, the, um, the need of, you need a very good collaboration with the different companies mm -hmm. Because they employ their apprentices, yeah. because they have to pay money to the young people, mm. they have to select their own people. Of course, they have the objective of training that sort of young people, and the objective of the whole school has to go together. How 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 can you develop that sort of curriculum that would take care of the need of the particular uh, student as well as the need of the different companies. Mm. Uh, this is uh, my, my first question. Mm. And the second question is that much of the education is done in the working place. It's not in the school. So so how how would your, your school uh, help the different companies to develop a good teaching, you know, strategy, curriculum, for the student, you know, they are the education is is carried out in the in the in the company, not in your school. So this is a very uh, very uh, interesting system in which you know it's not only the the teaching profession who are taking care of the student, it's the working force who's educating the kids, you know, and then this is a very fundamental sort of question. If we can develop that field, then if every every company would would train their student in some of uh, a pretty you know good way, then the whole society, men, men, power forces would develop very fast. Mm. Uh, I, you know, I think you probably you have very good experience <laughs> in that part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. To to your first um, question, um, um, our Curriculum, our mm. syllabus uh, comes from the German so called so, yeah. government. Government. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are different uh, uh, people mm. who are really into this vocational mm. training. Every state mm. send one of uh, these people, and they are talking about it uh, mm -hmm. the whole year. What can we change? They mm -hmm. they talk to the to the um, German mm -hmm. industry and commerce. Mm -hmm. So they are working together. Mm -hmm. It's a collaboration of all the, the, mm -hmm. the stakeholders, mm -hmm. okay? They work together and then they develop this curriculum mm -hmm. and they 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 change it uh, sometimes if, if they have different needs, mm -hmm. they will change the curriculum. And w we are working actually with three different streams mm -hmm. in three different curriculums. Mm -hmm. I mean, that shows the variety variety of, of, uh, of this curriculum. Mm -hmm. Digitalization has a different curriculum than wholesale and foreign trade, than mm -hmm. transport and logistic. Mm -hmm. So these are experts and they are working together. And then we take this um, um, curriculum mm -hmm. and bring it, uh, yeah, bring it into into work on this curriculum and and shorten it for mm -hmm. for our so training. basically it's centralized so it's centralized it's centralized, it's centralized but mm -hmm. there are many people who are oh, working yeah, together yeah, yeah. on this curriculum mm -hmm. so it, it can fulfill all the needs mm -hmm. uh in the future this mm -hmm. is uh, uh, one aspect and um to ensure the quality mm -hmm. which is the second question to ensure the quality in the training companies mm -hmm. um the the GIC, German mm. Industry mm. and Commerce, is supervising the uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Each company um, has to name, for example, one person who is responsible mm -hmm. for this training program. He has to fulfill different criteria. Mm -hmm. um, in Germany, we have a, a, a education for these trainers, so they can get a certificate and then they are allowed to train this program mm -hmm. so we have quality standards mm -hmm. okay and you have to fulfill if you want mm -hmm. to to join our program you need at least one person mm -hmm. yeah, in your company 
who fulfill these criteria. We have uh, training plans for mm. every single student. Mm. This, uh, the, the companies have to hand in these mm. training plans. We will we will have a look at these training training plans. We will uh, look do they match with our uh, mm. schedule with our syllabus so they can learn uh, different uh, content mm -hmm. yeah in in the training company and in school to the uh, at the same time mm -hmm. so this is the uh, responsibility of the of the GIC okay. yeah. yeah yeah I think the government have to take a real major part in it yeah. it's a war, more sort of a government you know yeah, sort of it's system. about company as well yeah. Com yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you yeah. can uh, probably, yeah, you can yeah, say was, something about. Yeah. I'm a trainer. Yeah, uh -huh. he's a trainer. I was, I was doing this uh, vocational training in my previous company mm -hmm. for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that the company is on the same page, not mm -hmm. just I get a, a training and it's not a. Can you? Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I, yeah. I have been doing training over 10 years for, for vocational training. Here. And it's important the company is really standing behind you. As Thorsten said, you must have the ability and also qualification to do this. You have to make a schedule, and the schedule should follow the plan from the school, the, the lessons. And you follow the plan. Important is that the students doing uh, rotation to all the departments so they have to know how the company how a, a company works mm -hmm. so you're going through everything and you have to supervise in the beginning some colleagues will say why well, it's a lot of waste of time it's just spending my time doesn't do anything efficient it's correct but again it's in training bicycle riding you start slowly then you get faster so gives mm -hmm. this training time as I said the first year they rotate the whole company mm -hmm. the second year they have certain strengths, use the strengths of the trainee, and before the exam, let them choose what they're best of, and then let them work over there, and then they can really fulfill the requirements. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to to guide them, because they're still youngsters, and you have to guide them. It's mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. And this, I think this makes clear, this program can only work if you work together. Yeah. <coughs> GIC, Mm. Kaplan, mm. Uh, general yeah. business faculty, mm. uh, the training companies, the trainees, mm. or everyone has, has mm. worked really, really strong together. Yeah. yeah. There's some some question for audience, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have uh, one question from one audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from Mr. Anthony Wan, and he said, uh, "Mr. Rahul, yes, is your video in German?" If your video is on YouTube, is it possible to turn on English or Chinese auto translate script um, for your video? The 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 second video I I did not show in the in the presentation. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, from a, a TV station in, in in Germany, and it's not in in. Uh, not in it's English. only in, in no not in English, only in German in German language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I don't have an English okay. version yeah. of that video. Yeah. Uh, and, and our no, I, I don't see any other chat from here. I, I have a question. Yes, sure. So based on what I heard, uh, the whole setup is really supported by uh, the German government. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's funded by the German government. Yes. Through uh, public yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, funding. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um, it's very interesting, and it is also very specific. It, it appears to me <coughs> that uh, the system is to support the German trade and industry, which it is, okay, in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So I suppose that the model <coughs> is replicated right? uh, probably in uh, in South America because I saw a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of German. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of country. Yes. <laughs> in South America. But they are not really big. So if I look at your operation in Hong Kong, uh, its purpose seems to be specifically to support the German community. Mm. Right? Mm. So that is the very, very important purpose. Am I correct? Um, yeah, that's one, one part, the German companies. But mm -hmm. as I said, also uh, local companies 
can join our program. Right. I mean, it's it's not a German thing yeah. to to uh, work together with trainees to train them right. to 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 give them uh, more skills and I mean every so company. Can, yeah, we, we are of course we are yeah. we are open to every company. But as I said, we have to make sure that uh, these companies can fulfill these criteria. Right. And this takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but that's uh, uh, nothing uh, you, you cannot achieve. I mean, yeah, it's... it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm from the vocational education sector. Okay. Before every time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I haven't heard of mm. the setup. Well, mm -hmm. my limited uh, um, network. Okay. Uh, but I know of young people uh, from Germany, okay, uh, or in Hong Kong, and they are part of your your mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. okay, through the Rotary Club, mm -hmm. because one of mm -hmm. the Rotary Club they sponsor a number of young uh, Germans, okay, and form their own Rotary Club, mm -hmm. and, and 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 they, and that's how I I get to know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some further comments I'd like to make. I'm very, I mean, you have a lot of input from the industry in the development of the curriculum contents, okay, which is very good mm -hmm. because the, the content keeps on moving. You really need to adapt uh, and know what is happening, right? Yeah. And uh, just to share in Hong Kong, uh, my understanding is maybe you may be interested to know we have a lot of training boards, okay, uh, under the government sec uh, supervision as well. Mm -hmm. And this training board uh, normally is under the vocational training council. Yeah. And they, uh, through this training board, uh, they are able to influence all the programs, okay, uh, in 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 offered to the public. Uh, which I think is that what, what that means is really it's good to see that people understand that so that we are able to offer up to day program, mm. we have to work very closely mm. with the industry, and it's really good to yeah. see it yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. Just ju just to add uh, your your comment, um, I had a, a speech to students from the Baptist University right. two weeks ago, right. and I I didn't know that. There are so many students, there were around 25, 30 students, they could speak proper German, they learned German language for four years. Oh, yeah. They are uh, uh, in the last steps of, of graduating. And I, I asked him, okay, what, 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 what are you going to do after you finish your studies? You are really, you are uh, uh, the perfect target group for these companies and not for only the German companies, for all companies here in, in, the, in, the, in the market here in Hong Kong. So, but they could join our program, mm. get a step into a company, mm -hmm. international company, and yeah, try to get to, to your uh, um, uh, educational, uh, to, yeah. your, to your professional path, mm -hmm. do the first step. So apply and uh, yeah, join our program. You are aware of, of you, you can speak German language, you can speak Cantonese. This is also very, or Mandarin. Very, this is very, very important. Very, yeah, yeah, they are re really yeah. unique people, really. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. But they, they don't know, actually. Exactly. Yeah. They don't know, you know, they are really, really uh, important for the, for the companies outside. I'm aware of it. Yeah. But I don't know that there is some uh, structure behind. Mm. So it's really good that uh, that's yeah, yeah. more organized. Yeah. Some of them spent, spent one year in, in Hong Kong, yeah, uh, in, 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 in Germany, right. for example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Rabu, yes. I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, about 40 years ago mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, uh, young students, uh, university students or uh, secondary school stu uh, students, they were interested in learning German mm -hmm. as well, uh, apart from France, French. Uh, but nowadays in Hong Kong, I would say most young people, what language they, they foreign language they, they like to learn. Japanese, <laughs> and <laughs> France, and the third one, Spanish. Spanish um, uh, Germany, uh, German, very few students.
got interested. So, uh, would you uh, think or try to promote the interest in learning <laughs> German in Hong Kong? Well, because why, why I say this? German is actually a very important language in Europe. If you want to uh, go to study in Germany, in Swiss, Switzerland, in Austria, all those places, you need to know German. Otherwise, you can't survive. But students in Hong Kong, they don't know. So that's why you say that students in Baptist College, mm. their German is not good enough. No, no. <laughs> I don't think it, it's good enough to join our program, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. It's, it's good enough to, to, to in join our, our program. In our, our day at university, in second year, we study one year. Yeah. Germany, good in institute. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Because yeah. at that time, you know, it's a, yeah. uh, if you go to do a PhD, you know, in anywhere yeah. in the world, mm. probably you need, you know, more than, you know, English. Yeah. So yeah. most probably right. we choose German is the, the language to, um, you need to do. Maybe, you know, the Goethe Institute at that time in Como, I think it's much more than nowadays because uh, we haven't heard of the Goethe Institute for a long time. <laughs> a bit of time. Well, they are still running a lot They're of programs in, in, in German, German language programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my wife was working for the yeah, Goethe Institute. Goethe yeah, 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 yeah. And also, also, uh, I have to mention uh, German Swiss International yeah. School. Yeah. They, they opened a so called fast track uh, for local people to join the German stream, the mm. German international stream, mm. and to graduate with the German uh, international yeah. abitur yeah. for for locals. Mm. So they offer a, a Chinese-English uh, combination in, uh, in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. They started in kindergarten. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I also want to uh, talk to you. Uh, in, in the days when I was a young kid in school, our school has uh, the secondary school. They have a uh, second language course in French and also second language course in German, very few. Not too many students took it, but some did. So, but nowadays in Hong Kong, in the secondary school, do you see those? No. Yes, point one. Mm -hmm. Point two, I have a friend. He has a daughter. She, she likes to play music. Somehow she got a scholarship to, to learn playing piano in Austria. Mm -hmm. And when she went to Austria for a year or two, she learned to speak very good German. Mm -hmm. And when she came back to Hong Kong, and she, she already graduated from secondary school, she looked for a job in Mandarin Hotel. The Mandarin Hotel accounting department accepted him as a trainee for, for the uh, accounting and like that. The reason is because she can speak German mm -hmm. and the uh, supervisor in that department happens to be a German speaking lady. So learning uh, one more language actually I think is important. Yeah, that's, that's my point. In, in related to this, uh, you know, in 1986, we went to visit a Dutch school, high school. Mm -hmm. You know, the, in the Dutch, you're in Dutch, in Holland. In you're Holland. in Holland, mm -hmm. you know, in Holland. And then I, I'm, you know, very fascinating that, you know, all students have to learn five languages. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, Holland is a country that have to deal two business with, you know, everywhere in the world yeah. so at least other than the two languages the dutch mm -hmm. and Flemish, they have to learn uh, english german and french uh the must so all students learn five languages some of the better students learn seven languages mm -hmm. and they do not find it too difficult mm -hmm. and in, in hong kong people you know uh we in education band at the time we, we thought that our, our, our you know our curriculum is too narrow it's too you know very little element of multicultural element in our school system. And then because you spend too much time, because our learning is another issue, you know. Yeah. I think that, you know, our learning in languages are not 
too efficient. You spend a lot of time learning one language. Actually, many of these languages can be learned within a very short time. If you missed that, we uh, contribution in that. Uh, <clears throat> so, so going back to the uh, our vocational uh, education, the education of of you know um, educating people who really working in society not working in our contact with society and then saying to the different companies to you know to train the student to work with the student in 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 ET, you know about 20 years ago we talked a lot about that but we have to not have an integrated sort of system how to deal with that maybe mr Zhao will know more about that you know mr Zhao is a senior officer in that navy department responsible for training of Okay. Uh, well, force. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I fully agree with you. Yeah. I fully agree with you. Um, I love languages because when I was young, you know, I spent every year I spent a month in Europe, mm. roaming around. So I've learned three Asian languages and six European languages. Wow. The more languages you learn, the easier mm. it gets mm -hmm. because there are so many things in common. Mm -hmm. But of course. Um, at 80, I've uh, forgotten all, <laughs> <laughs> except the ones I'm using every day. I'm very, very impressed by what you're, what you're doing in Hong Kong. I'm very, very impressed. Okay. Um, before my retirement, my last job was um, setting up a $700 million retraining mm -hmm. program you know, when all our factories move across the world. Over, we lost over 50% of the total jobs. And I took care of that. Mm -hmm. So I started this uh, <clears throat> retraining program as a layman. I'm not a trainer, I know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. and after, but I was asked to do it. And we keep on asking questions and we keep on learning from other countries. And in the one of the countries I visited was Germany. Mm -hmm. I was still, <clears throat> um, you know, I'm so, so impressed by your apprenticeship program, mm. you know, the seven year apprenticeship mm. program. And the graduates earn more money than university graduates. Mm. The difference between the two systems, the one in Germany and one in Hong Kong, mm. number one is the cultural difference. Mm. Germans are very serious people. We, when you do something, you do it really hard. But we are more lazy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are easy going, right? We say something and we do something different. Yeah. But the Germans, you know, when you say something, you do it. Right? And the second thing is what the uh, Tata has pointed out. The German system is highly integrated. We have got two two gentlemen, you know, here. The company and the training bodies and the government are very, very committed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But then in other countries, they're different. Teachers are teachers, professors are professors, right? And training trainers in in companies are trainers. Mm -hmm. Students are students, completely different. Mm -hmm. But it takes the History, culture, to really integrate the system. But it, we have, we also have a, a really long experience. Yes. Okay, yes. so it, it's not like you you can build up this program in one year yes. and then you can run it yes. and everything is fine. I mean, you have to get into the get a deeper inside of the needs, really the needs of the company. What what are the needs of of the students of the of the uh, um, of the schools, also the parents uh, yes. have, a, have a, yeah, the company. Yeah. company. So this is developing over a long, 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 long time. It's a heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. But you yeah. have to start at some point. Yeah. You have to start to walk. <coughs> but how many students do you have last year? Uh, last year, we, grad we had uh, 21 graduates. Mm. 21 graduates? Yes, yes. So with uh, such a small tuition fee yeah. that you charge, mm. how can you survive? 
good, good question. Uh, as, as you mentioned before, or as you asked before, um, we are funded from the German government. Mm -hmm. So my position, for example, yes, I'm, a, I'm a German official. Yeah, the yes. German government sends me to Hong Kong yes. and um, I get paid in Germany. And uh, yeah, so this is the, the, yeah, the basic, so it's, it's funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think there's a lot. I mean, the government seems to be willing to invest a lot of money. Yes, yes, they do. They do. I mean, we we have around 140 uh, German schools abroad in the whole world. 140 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, schools. So they put a lot of effort and a lot of money into this uh, system. Um, uh, so we want to export our program because it's so successful and it can help other countries to develop. In this direction, so that's the the reason so, behind it. Yeah. For example, Hong Kong is out of the box because we are so used to what we have. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's a different different system. Very different. I work in Hong Kong Education Department for long years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hong Kong government is mm. very isolated. Yes, because we we have you know that issue of students have to learn some practical, you know, yes. skills and so on. So we have a project of applied learning yes. in high school. So we have assigned some time, spend some money. The school can, you know, have some money to get some people from outside to learn something other than the school, you know, in, in, the, in the curriculum. And, and also there, there are contests of time in the school about the curriculum and so on. So in Hong Kong, why things have, been, have to be so clumsy is that because it's all the interested sector is, is divided in different sectors and they're contesting for the resources yeah. of the, and the time of the students. Resources, so I, I, I think <coughs> this system, the important thing is the integration, the effort of the, you know, the industry, the government, and the professionals, the uh, the educationalists, they have to come together to have an integrated plan, how to work it out. For example, look at the time, I think from, just look at the timetable. In operator school, you'd have students who have a number of times in the school and other time in the factory. It would be, you know, a tremendous effort mm. to overcome the, all the practical thing in operating the system. So when I I said, you know, about 10 years ago, I, uh, I evaluated in a German sandwich course, high school German course. I'm very really interested in, you know, how the system, the system work had to get into the effort of people of different sectors, you know? Mm -hmm. We have three students from Hong Kong who from pre-vocational school, went to a sandwich course in high school in in Germany, and then they spend some of the time in uh, school and most of the time in the industry. And then all this sort of integration, all these sort of people need to support these three students are huge. If you look at from, you know, government yeah. point of view, you know, you have to put a lot of resources. And then the company have to do a lot of things, not only for their company, but the general public, you know, because this student who, who are working in the company for say three year, four year, when they graduated, you know, they are not staying in the company. They'll go to, you know, other companies. So it's different from, you know, the some of the school in a big company operate, the like MTR, the school and so but, on. And so it's a very different system. Yeah, yeah, but but the, the, I guess the, the training companies in Germany, they are aware of their social responsibility yeah. for the younger generation to offer them those positions in their training companies. And they know exactly afterwards they will benefit from it. Mm. Also, I mean, they can hire mm. uh, uh, yeah, other people. They probably did the same program in a different company, mm -hmm. but they can be sure they fulfill the same criteria mm -hmm. because it's, it's same the same standard, it's the same it's standard, standard, it's the same level. It doesn't matter where you if you work in company A or B or C, you know exactly it's the same standard because the examination it's the same. Yeah, yeah. So the 
you know, the, the system, the government had to, you know, design on a unified system like that. Take tremendous effort and tremendous leverage, uh, cooperation with the different sectors. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you, you, I agree yeah. completely. And you're interesting to know. Yeah. You know, this discussion helps me to understand something I don't understand for 20, from 25 years. I didn't know why was our retraining program so successful in 1993-1994. After 12 months, a new program we developed in Hong Kong won the best, the, the title, the best in the world. Uh, Know, by the OECD Organization for Economic Cooperation mm-hmm. Development. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't understand. Hong Kong is so small. Mm-hmm. We've started for just one year. We've got so many, so many problems every day. That, that, and then the director of OECD told me that the program you've developed in Hong Kong is the best in the world. And then today, you have uh, helped me to, uh, to explain it. The reason was because I was a complete layman. I was controlling this seven hundred million dollars, and because I was a lady, yeah, no so West in, ages. <laughs> so I, I invited yeah, all, all the stakeholders to be involved in the discussion, in the formulation yeah. of policies, yeah. and in the review and the focus of everything that we do with the training bodies, with the trainers, mm. with the companies mm. involved. Mm. Everyone was so deeply involved. Mm. And everyone contributed their ideas, their part, yeah. and tell us what are, what is the best way to do and what is best to the students. And you know, we also involved the trainees mm. themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You know, they, so, and, and then, you know, the funny thing is, two years later, I was asked by the governor the last governor in Hong Kong, Chris Patton. He, he, he <clears throat> sent me to the executive council, you know, 12 wise men, and then chairman that government. He said, Mr. Chow, I don't understand. You know, all the retraining programs in the world, as I, in, in, in the United Kingdom, in Germany, in France, in the United States, last for one year or two years. But here in Hong Kong, over half of the material programs last for only one week. Why? You know, he was querying me. You are cheating. <laughs> you are cheating. And then I was, you know, I I play a, I make a joke on the governor. And I said, well, because I was a little bit annoyed. You know, if this this fat old man, right, mm-hmm. who asked me, who keep on pushing me. When I first took the job, the, uh, the, the target was 3,000. And then he came to Hong Kong, and then he looked, I mean, he came to Hong Kong to start this program. And then, the, you know, uh, six months later, he, his assistant told me over the phone, he said that the boss said that three, we have got three, 200,000 people unemployed. And your problem is only 3,000. 3, Can you explain a little? Well, our program was designed by experts in the vocational training center, you know, <laughs> council, yeah. right? They, they do all the calculations. They just said, well, probably, you know, if you said, as I said, $700 million, you can th- train 3,000 persons a year, right? So, and then he said, Can, his assistant said, Can you increase it a little, right? So I said, well, I'll discuss with my with my uh, my team, right? And then my team said that, well, training for one year, you increase from 300 to 3,000 to 5,000 is a huge job, right? But I said, well, it's the boss, <laughs> the governor said, right? And so we, we agreed. And then three months later, before the, the policy speech, you know, from the government house, from the governor's house, he says, he says, what? What's the other thing? Two small. 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 Two small.
And then the, the, uh, the secretary said, that his uh, secretary said, can you increase to 10,000? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, that, wow, you, it's difficult. It's a bit difficult, technically, right? Mm -hmm. So after I uh, um, uh, 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 discuss with my team, and then, you know, for the first time, I heard my deputy, you know, saying foul language. He said, <laughs> what are these politicians doing? You know, doubling the training. We need so many school rooms, you know, we need so many trainers, etc. I said, I said that 200,000 people are employed, mm. right? One, 10,000 is a small sum, right? So I said that, but if he didn't ask us, he's prescribed how to do it, right? I said, in restaurants, you can have self-help service and you can have, you know, uh, you know, you have two waiters serving you, right? And that's what we accept. And then, we developed these short courses, right? And then three years later, you know, he asked me, what happened? <laughs> so I was a bit fed up. And I said, well, there is one thing I don't understand. And then, you know, the older, old, old, the wiser old man, you know, was staring at me. What? I, I was very young at the time. Right? <laughs> was still black hair, you know, 47. And, and then, and then, the, and then but, but, the, but the governor was very nice. And he was, he was, he said, what, do, what, what the thing that you don't, you don't understand? I said, I don't understand the why the professional, the vocational training programs lasting one or two years, their success rate of re-employment is only 20% something. And our program, one week, you know what's the success rate? Over 80%. I think they had open. Now, the thing, and, and then the and then the, the governor said, tell, tell this what prof wise old man, Jason. He, he said, how can you argue against success? Now, but my key point is this: that today, thank you so much, you know, for the two gentlemen. You know, you really work as a team. You know, you are not working alone. You are working as a team. And then there are another partner who is not here, right? Yeah. The, 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 train, the trainees themselves. Now, the important thing is, is if you work as a team, you can work miracle. You know exactly what each party needs and what each party can contribute. And then together, you can make a success. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, all the, all the, the wise people in each team, you know, is thinking that I know all, I know best. And then they work separately. They're canceling each other's efforts. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Rabun, uh, <coughs> I have uh, uh, some questions from uh, the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, Louise Wong, and she uh, requested me to ask her okay. uh, the question is like this. Mr. Rabu, many thanks for your comprehensive presentation on the new system professional training in Germany. Hope you can update us more. What focus the German government in implementing the new system? Where do you get the funding to implement the new system? Please elaborate the cost incurred for the company and government. Is there any dropout during the training process? Other than Germany, any other overseas country implementing the new system in professional training? Any plans to introduce other professional training in the years ahead? Okay. Okay, these are these are a lot of, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> questions. Um, um, I I would say well, um, as as I mentioned, uh, we have different countries who offer the same program. In, in my presentation, you can see in Latin America, in Europe also. So um, um, the idea of the German government um, was, and the, all these. Uh, um, locations are were established around 40 years ago okay so the idea was first um, to give 
as I said, the German and uh, German speaking families in the foreign countries, the opportunity uh, for their kids, the opportunity to stay with their parents and uh, do something different. No? But do something for the German market as well, because one day they will move back to Germany. Mm -hmm. So it's aligned to the German uh, education system and the policy. And um, but also for local people here again, um, we have so many German companies uh, or, or Germans who are leading international companies. So they all need young talents. And it's also for the labor market, for, for, the, for the locals. They can also join our program. As I said, we have so many uh, uh, Hong Kong uh, uh, young talents who can speak the German language. They can join this program and they can work in a Hong Kong-based company, in international companies. It could be the first step into the uh, education, uh, into the, the, the econo economy for them. You know, So this is... The target of the, I mean, as I said, it's the backbone of our economy. This system, really, every second German, uh, as I mentioned, uh, did this program in the past. We have 1.3 million young uh, 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 graduates who are joining this program every year in Germany. And we are also running out. Right now, we have the discussion in Germany as well. We are also running out of talents because everyone thinks the younger generation right now a lot of uh, uh, young people think i i can only be successful if i if it's for this study one where you open it up study if the words come out of course these are secret abroad, but that lock and my, then even the center uh, drawer opinion, comes out which is secret is on the top true. of it you is can an eagle, also be which very is a symbol of the roman empire if you force of strength do this program first we have here is you press a button a and the writing slope comes the, out so uh, if you want to be able to write on something or, or read, you had an extra slope. The then on the side, you press the first we have here, you press a button, a secret drawer comes out. Slope you press out. another so button on the inside, you write on something, the secret drawer comes out, and you had an extra slope. On the side, on the side, line has come out of the buttons. On the other side, the secret drawer comes out. You press another button on the inside, and the secret drawer comes out, and you press a button on the side, the line has come out. On the other side of the desk, another drawer at the top, what we have here, Press Socrates. a button, we'll more drawers, press a button further here, develop. and two more and drawers come out, get the and then you press position. another button, another drawer another at the top, the desk needs a center piece. press a button, and here's more drawers, the you know, for this so one, where you open like it up, the drawers come out, of course these are secret, follow one that lock, you have and then even the center drawer comes out, which is secret, on the top of it. There are so many possibilities around you, but you need a base, and I'm with you. You need a base. It's a it's a basic knowledge. How can you survive as an individual, <laughs> for example? Huh? So these are basic things what we teach as well. What's a contract? Uh, uh, what what is your responsibility if you sign a contract? I mean, people with 18, 19 years, they sign contracts. They have no idea sometimes what they are doing, what they are signing. Uh. What are your res responsibilities? Huh? What can you uh, expect from from the contract? If the, if your partner is doing something wrong, now you know we, because we teach them what's a contract, what what it means to sign it, you know. So how can you negotiate uh, your own needs, you know? So this is fundamental, I think. And every every single really uh, uh, student in this age should have this uh, uh, knowledge to be able to manage your own life so this is really something which is very important and this is the idea of the of the german government government help uh, um, uh, companies abroad when we have a lot of german companies here um, help these people to to uh, uh, get more more trainees uh, because they are the future they are our future you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Another follow-up question from Ms. Ludwig. Yeah. Mr. Rahul, is there any barrier coming from the parent mindset yeah. and some industry or corporation not willing to support 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of barriers, to be honest, um, because some parents don't understand really the needs, in my uh, opinion. Again, it's a different culture, especially here in Hong Kong. You know, everyone is focused on my kid has to get the best education. They spend thousands and thousands of Hong Kong dollars for the education. They spend so much money into the education of their children. And then they expect after graduating, they have to go to the best universities in the world. But from my perspective, this is not a guarantee. It's not a job guarantee. Okay? So you can graduate in one of those uh, universities, but it will not mean you will have uh, a, a, a company afterwards. It will not mean you will be happy with what you are doing afterwards. You know, you are satisfied in your job. But how can they really think about if the whole the whole path is already written in stone yeah, for these young talents? They have to make their own, in my experience, they have to make their own experience. And this leads you I, I I showed you my uh, career, okay? It, it was like this. It was not straight, but I'm really happy that I went through different steps in my career because every single thing I did, I experienced more. And I I, I tell my students uh, often, when I was 30, 32, I totally changed my whole uh, uh life because I was educated in business administration. I worked for a company. Everything was fine. I had family, kids. But I I changed my, my mindset with tw uh, 32, 33. Where can you do this? In this age, usually you are on track. Uh, you have uh, other things to do. But yeah, if I had the possibility to, to work with younger talents, with students in the university, I, I changed my whole path and and um, my my professional career. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I, now I'm happy that I did this because I can say for myself, I'm happy what I'm doing every day. I, I'm really happy. Go to work, put effort in it, and and I'm satisfied. You know, and this is the most important thing. You should be satisfied if you go home from your work. How many people are going to work because they have to? They are not really happy with what they are doing, the, the uh, uh, requirements and everything. So if you are not happy, you have to change something. And if you are able to get this um, uh, experience in a young age, it will help you probably to find your path in the future. My opinion, yeah. How, yeah. how many students do you get from German Swiss school in Hong Kong in the last few years. Okay. I mean that the number of the, the graduates are are uh, yeah not so high <laughs> right now for, from the German stream. I, I can only talk uh, uh, for this for the German stream. Um, around six, seven? Yeah. It's a huge number. <coughs> Yeah, if you compare it to the to the graduates, I mean, right now my my old, uh, my my middle son Matt, he's uh, graduating this year at German Swiss. There are only four students in one class. Yeah, uh, I think the issue is yeah. that I think even in Germany, they they would be different point of view of the parents. Mm. We cannot we are do not say that this system this. This way, this stream is better than other streams. No, 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 no. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. But sure. we have to build opportunities mm. for students of different streams. That is yeah. important. Yeah. Some mm. students have different characteristics, mm. different style of learning, and so yeah, on. Yeah. Different path. Then I think the important thing in this German system is they get very elaborate, you know, system for those students who prefer not going to US. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not, you know, only spending money for the, you know, high power of the more able students. Spending money on all the students with different <coughs> needs, 
and <laughs> capabilities and so on. And eventually, mm. they will succeed. Mm. So I think mm. that is 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 not trying to say. We we'll look at the German system; they're all four four different streams in high school, mm. and then well, you know, whatever way, then you will choose mm. the sort of way you go. Uh, I think that, and then we we look at this system. We found that the money spending, even for the those students, not the straightforward group, is much more than is much uh, less than you spend on the you know this sort of dual system. I think the dual system, in a way, is more expensive than you just send standard schools, standard universities, mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. but. The government is, you know, uh, committed to spend money, you know, on this sort of student. That's one point that I really appreciate very much. Yeah. The interesting thing is that, uh, you know, your system, I mean, when you're talking to parents, parents always want the best, right? Sure. Fair enough, fair enough, yeah, yeah. right? But then your system is not competing with the best universities in Germany. Yeah. They've got the free trust. The parents, the kids have the free choice, mm -hmm. right? But then you are offering them an extra choice, yeah, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and then you know, one thing that I mean, at the age of 80, I learned. I mean, I, I graduated from Hong Kong University when it was a very small university with only 1,600 students, a very exclusive university. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I had the chance to went to Oxford University and also to the <coughs> to the uh, Hachiuchi research, research Center in Japan, you know, and then so many official visits to Germany, to France, to, to uh, England, you know, all, all, the, uh, all, all these, uh, these things. And then I, I come to them at the age of 80. And you know, one thing that is sorely lacking in our whole education system is how to look I'm learning how to learn. Mm -hmm. You have an open mind. Mm -hmm. You must not let your know, preconceived ideas, you know, take everything, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the really important thing is to give opportunities for the youngsters mm -hmm. to develop their interest, their inspiration. Then they can excel in whichever field if they excel. Mm -hmm. Isn't I to totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, you know, so many students are asking me, oh, Mr. Rauhut, what what should I do afterwards, mm -hmm. after this program? Mm -hmm. And they're asking me. I mean, we have a, a, a real uh, uh, close relationship, of course, because we are small classes, so mm -hmm. you interact with your students. And, and they are asking me, what, what, what would you say? What, what, what should I do afterwards, after, after this program? I, I always say to my students, follow your passions. <laughs> Follow your passion. Whether you agree with you Russia, you don't dreams, like Russia, what, what you, uh, you, do, you know you support what, Ukraine. What you are interested blowing in. up and the North Stream pipelines in, is a completely different passion, beast. You will this be is civilian excellent. infrastructure. The media oh, know who blew up North Stream. Else, they all know. Just they all know. But the United States blew up North Stream. <laughs> very very few view, states are, are capable of doing this very this sort of sabotage. Who has the motive to do this sort of thing? Again, it's it's maybe the U.S. and the U.K. That's who comes to mind. We had and it opportunities was the US. like this. They say, okay? oh, well, so if Putin invades, you, there will be no Nord yeah, Stream 2. They were planning this before there was any invasion. What, what they, do? they were planning and this for nowadays, months. And they've been saying for graduate, years, younger, right? The CIA say, oh, it wasn't us. The White House, oh, it wasn't us. They always say this. Germany, they they always the say this with, N you know, with the NSA master base, <laughs> with Watergate, <laughs> with the Bay of Pigs, with the Miley Massacre, with Abu Ghraib. They always come out with these lies. And then we know for sure it was them. Look at these European leaders. These people calling themselves <laughs> European leaders, your ally, Question mark, your right? ally What's the next just step? blew up your cheap and your, uh, yeah, source your of gas. Your ally like this, committed you know, industrial so sabotage so much, against much, your much, civilian much, much, infrastructure so to further their political goals. You know, your yeah, ally to change committed an act of state <laughs> yeah, terrorism I, I, I against you and you do I nothing? Have, you say nothing? Area. You don't know who did it? You got no results after months of investigation? Great, bullshit! Great, uh, exam, great, great bullshit! Great Shame on you, you no, goddamn no, cowards! You no, spineless no, hacks! No, you call yourselves no, leaders? No, you don't no, represent no, anyone no, in no, Europe. No, you you no, you represent no, Uncle Sam. No, no. 
You're a ca you are cowards. Schultz is a coward. Sunak is a coward. Macron is a coward. They, they don't. They have no self-respect. You let your ally blow up your infrastructure and you don't say a word. That's your friend. Who needs enemies with friends like that? Do, you, do they have the self-respect? Do they have what it takes? Do you have yeah, yeah. the dignity we have a, uh, to stand really up for a, yourselves, a for your country, for your people, and call the, the Americans out for doing this? We work together Again, you can dislike Putin all you want. You can criticize program. Russia all you it's want. Not, I really don't care. I could not care less. But let's stop kidding each other. The Russians didn't blow up their own pipeline. The Americans did it. Okay, Seymour local, Hirsch okay, okay. has, I the has German, proof okay. now yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the from local, a source no, with direct no, knowledge no, of the planning but this and would the media be, yeah, yeah, this to say the media uh, are cowards. Uh, uh, and so now, you know, they're calling this a blog post? Bring more a blog post? Local, what is this, some uh, fucking teenager uh, writing a poem? Uh, right, this is Seymour right, Hirsch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's a journalist, and just because you published it on Substack, they don't like that. He published on Substack because the New York Times, because all these outlets won't run this story properly because they're too coward to do it. Instead, they make up conspiracy theories. They go cuckoo and say it was Russia. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this, Maybe, you know, you know, system, maybe I'll alternate to, you know, some students who are not happy with the local system. That's like, you know, all those who are not happy with the local school go to international school. Mm -hmm. So we go to an international training, you know, system. That can be, you know, maybe one, one of the very least, you know, things like that. <coughs> but changing the whole Hong Kong system, so that is a very massive culture. Yes. Oh, culture. You cannot change it, but you can adopt it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then may I ask you two gentlemen? Yeah. You've been in Hong Kong, right? Yourself, yeah. you've been here, <laughs> seeing all these changes. <laughs> what do you see as the strength and the weaknesses of uh, our system or the, the whole Hong Kong society? What's the attractions and what are the frustrations? <laughs> Maybe you can start first. <laughs> you are living here for, for so many years. <laughs> 27 years. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no, the no, balloon no. was flying over yeah. Botswana. Yeah. We, we did not countries. name any countries, Matt. I know and this. My I'm just using that as an example. Example. Well, I use a fictional And example. I have to say, since I'm in Hong Kong, I'm not going to use Atlantis, but it's underwater, so that's a bad one. Even I come from a small. How do we know? We have had conversations with countries. We have. We, we, I, will, I will. I will say broadly that we have a range of means that are expensive. And if you guys are so sure that four other countries, other countries, other countries, other countries, which I just no. So Hong Kong, what is a little bit uh, frustrating is here. Yeah, we know all the up and downs we had economically, politically. I don't talk about this. But for the company and school system, I find it a little bit sad that Hong Kong, the school system, you have to line up, you have to apply years ahead to get the school place. Education is the number one you have to do. There are certain things you have to provide for your population. And education is one of them. Education, housing, medical, this must be guaranteed and must be provided by the government. There's no discussion. This was a bit surprised that you have to apply for a school to get a, a good seat and get a good school and learning. The kids study even in pre kindergarten, have to study. They have no childhood. They, they don't have time to play. They have no time to develop their creativity because there is no time. It's a little bit of a pity. It was surprised when I learned this one. And for the business, yes, as I said, business here is always something going on. <coughs> Hong Kong is so vibrant, there's always movement. And for the companies, the dual system, it's for them a good chance. That's why the previous companies joining the system and also trading them. It might be in the beginning, yes, it's not efficient or productive for my company. But again, think ahead. You have a social <coughs> responsibility. If I, I did the same thing many years back, if I wouldn't have done it, it would be, I don't know what I am. So you have to get the use a chance and train them. Start slowly and let some work the pass. So once they look into the business economic, maybe they have another choice. I don't want to study anymore. I do something else. Or I study and I build up of something. As Torsten said, follow your, your dreams, what you like to do. That's a good chance because, you know, back in the workforce, 
And once in a workforce, you know how much money you earn, how do you spend? It's not like you get all every time money free of charge from the parents or somewhere. Mm-hmm. You earn money and now you spend <laughs> go to the movie or save for my driving license or save for this, I make a nice training. Mm-hmm. So you learn how to, to walk your path in life. So this training system can be adopted to Hong Kong, I believe so, it can be adopted anywhere. Mm-hmm. Of course, as Torsten said, you can make it one to one. It's a culture clash, it doesn't work, but mm-hmm. you can adopt slowly. Mm-hmm. And I believe companies in Hong Kong would like to do this because you get better quality of workforce, much better. So this is a big, a big step forward also for Hong Kong. I think Hong Kong can do it. We can do things pretty fast if we want to. So if you get the right people on the table, mm. it will work. Yes. But you don't have to make it in two years. You can make it maybe in one year. But you have to start slowly. And I believe the, the, the program you did with one week was mainly not for the youth, but it was for the whole workforce, whatever. Yes. You are unemployed or you are a youth one. In one week, you get like a crash course. At least you can do something properly. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> but you don't think you're useless. You learn one week, I can do something. So if you, you lift up the evaluation, it's, mm-hmm. it's very important, the self-esteem. And for this vocational training, if you can even make it just for one year in Hong Kong, but you have to start. Yes. And you get the quality, it will be much better later on. Yes. And the facilities in Hong Kong, <coughs> I believe we have it. Yes. <coughs> Any other questions? No, uh, no, 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 uh, mm. to, to Germany, mm. I, I really, well, we live in Discovery Bay. This is almost like living in, in Germany <laughs> in a safe <laughs> haven, you know, quiet, and, you know. Um, so this is, it's not a really a big, big change for, for me, but what's a, a really different is the, um, which I really, really appreciate is the, the, uh, the safety here in Hong Kong. Wow, this is something really, really I never experienced anywhere in the world. Really, with my family, they can, my, my kids, they can play outside. They can, they can walk around. They can visit friends outside. I, I'm never afraid of there could be something happen. You know, so the safety is a really important thing for me as a parent, from a, from a parent uh, perspective. And I really, really, really uh, appreciate that. And I. Well, I live in Hong Kong since 2017, and I, I really call it my second home. I, I'm really into Hong Kong, and I, even if we had these problems, uh, as you mentioned before, but I, I really love it here. I love the people here. They are so friendly, open-minded, and this is something really you should you should uh, uh, keep always keep uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, mindset. This is something I, I really appreciate yeah, 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 in the city. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. And uh, maybe I, I would like to come over to make announcement for, for the next yeah. meeting. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, dear all, uh, thank you for attending the, this uh, web seminar. And we just have a very remarkable and great uh, web seminar by Mr. Rahul. He gives us a, a, an in-depth uh, study on the German uh, dual system, which we know very few in Hong Kong. Now we know that uh, that is how the German dual system is being so successful by collaborating with uh, big companies in Germany to provide the practical training on one side and uh, educational training on the other side. So uh, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the Tannehill uh, workshop, thank uh, Mr. Rahud uh, for his great presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, 
I'd like to announce uh, our upcoming uh, meetings in in the coming next two weeks. I sorry, I, I will do it in uh, Cantonese. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, guys, we have two weeks of meetings. The first one is on the 28th of December. The second one is on the 29th of December. 必定比第一集更加精彩，亦都更加深入。咁啊，有興趣於核聚變同埋新能源嘅誒朋友，記得參加。然之後跟住咧，就誒廿五號就係、是、誒、呃、阿何明新先生，佢係前警司、前高級警司，佢會講香港警隊。嘅鋭變，如果你有興趣想知道香港警隊近年嘅鋭變係點樣樣咧，歡迎你到時參加誒、呃、個 web seminar。咁、呃、我哋今日咧就都誒好、呃、精彩啦，都 run 咗時間。咁啊，多謝大家嘅參與。Thank you very much for attending. Thank you. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Ye